Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this week's video we're going to be looking at the latest update for Visual Composer and that's version 5.2. Now this is released today which is the 5th of July 2017 and if you don't have the update installed I'd recommend jumping over to your plugin section, checking out there and you should see that you've got the update available to you. Now obviously you need to have a fully installed version and a fully registered and licensed version of Visual Composer to be able to update this. If it's bundled with a theme, then you're going to have to wait for the theme developers to come out with an update that will include this new version. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the new features that's been added into this and I'm going to give you a brief demonstration of what they do and how to use them. So without further ado, let's take a look at those new updates. Okay, I'm in the admin section now of WordPress and as you can see I've got a new page created and we've got Visual Composer ready to start working with. Now nothing has changed visually, you can see it looks exactly the same as it has done and if we take a look at the elements we'll see there are a couple of new options in there. If we take a look you can see we now have the option for sections which we'll take a look at in a moment and we also have a zigzag separator. So this just brings in another option to have a different form of separator from the normal separator with text or the separator without text to just sort of section up parts of the content on your page. So it's a quite nice little addition. The sections is something a little bit more sort of powerful than the zigzag separator and like I say we'll take a look at that in a moment. But first of all let's check out what the zigzag separator gives us. So we click you can see it brings up a dialog box where we've got two tabs, general, and we've got the design options where we can control things like the margins, the padding, and spacing, and so on. What we're concentrating on, though, is this section, the general section. As you can see, we can choose a color. So let's go through and choose something like, well, let's just choose green for this example. The alignment, you can see we have three options available. We've got center, left, and right. We then have the element width, which you can see we can choose from a range of predefined options from 10% right the way to 100%. And you can see we've got the border width. Again, we can choose from a range of different options in there. And finally, we've got CSS animation. Now, as with most of these things, you can also go in and give this an element ID, like we can with pretty much everything inside Visual Composer, which then allows you to go through and actually tag that and use that through CSS and other various different things. Again, we've also got the extra class name, so if you want to target this specifically through our, our style sheets, we can do that very easily. So let's just change some of these parameters. Let's just say we want to have this to be 60%, for example, and we'll set this to be large, and we'll animate it in. We'll have a bounce in down, and you can see it gives us a little demonstration of what that animation is going to look like. I'm not going to worry about the design options. We'll leave those as they are, or the element ID and class name, because we're not going to go in and target this. So what I'm going to do is click on Save Changes, update my page, and then I'll just jump over to my demonstration page, and we can take a look. If I refresh that, you can see now we have our animated zigzag line that's 60% in the center, all very simple and straightforward. Obviously, if we want to jump back in there and make some changes to that, we can simply come in and do exactly what we want. So we can set that to 100%, for example, change the color to, let's go for peacock, and we'll choose the border to be small, and we'll get rid of the animations. So we'll set that to none. So you can see now we can go through hit save changes on there, update that, come back over to our test page, refresh, and you can see there's the changes in there. If we want this to go full width, we can do that quite easily. We can just jump back into the editor, go to the row itself this time, where we can control exactly how much space this particular element is going to take up on our page. Click on the little edit icon, and you can see we've got the options in there now for stretching the row. So we can say we want to set this now and we'll set it to stretch it to row and content and we'll say no paddings on there. Obviously, there's all the other normal options we have available inside the row settings, which I'm not going to delve into. And we'll just hit save changes and update that. And if we jump back over again to our test page and refresh it, you can see now that goes right the way across the entire width of the screen. So pretty simple and straightforward there. So let's just get rid of that. And let's just go back in now and click add another element. And this time we're going to take a look at the section element. So if we click on that, you can see this brings up what looks very similar to the row layout. But there's a couple of differences in there. If I add a row in, just so you can see the difference, we'll just say we want to add a row. You can see this is grayed out and we have a couple of options on the left hand side where we control the movement, the position of it. In other words, the actual column structure we want to work with. And on the right hand side, you can see we've got the option to clone this, to edit this and to delete it. The same. We also have the option to collapse this where we don't have that on the actual section by here. 
So what exactly is the difference between a row and a section in the latest version of Visual Composer? Well, let's take a practical example. If we look at a row, you can see that we can go in there and we can now start adding elements in there. So we can add different widgets in there, like text widgets and so on. We can also come in and we can section this up however we want to. So let's just say we want to put two columns. Now, what we can also do is we can go into there and we can say we want to add another row in there. So we've now created a nested row. Now, if you ever worked with tables back in the day, then you'll know that you can create more complicated layouts by nesting various different cells, or in this example, uh, rows, into each other to create that more complex layout. So once we have this in there, you can see we now have all the options. So if I wanted to, I could break that up into four sections. So now we could easily come in and do the same on the right-hand side, and we could end up with eight different columns inside that row layout, which we can't do straight out of the box. Obviously, we could go in and set custom in there, but we still kind of have some limitations on what we can do. So you can do that. Now, the other thing you have to bear in mind is that once we do this, we can now no longer add any more rows in there. We've kind of hit the limit of what we can do. So we can nest one row inside a row. Okay, so hopefully you're still with me. Now, what we can do with a section is we can use this as a container to create more complex layouts and move those around and save those out as different templates. So once we've got this uh, sort of section available to us, we can now start putting whatever we want inside there based inside a row. So we can click and we can add a row in there. Now you can see there's nothing else available to us because a section can only contain the basic building blocks. In other words, it can only contain a row and then you put your other widgets inside that row. So it is like I say, it's just a container. So we can insert our row. So we now end up with a row inside this section. So now we can do all the normal things we do with a row. So we can add extra columns in there if we want to. We can come down and add another row in there. And you can see again, because we're still working inside that container, we can only add in rows. So we can now build up our structure of our site and we can very quickly and easily build that basic structure through using rows. And then once we've got our rows in there, we can then go in and start adding additional elements in there. So we can, again, we can add another row if we wanted to get more complex or we can add a text block in there. And we'll just say save change on that. We can duplicate that out. So we've now built up some basics and we'll just put a separator in there and we'll just leave that as it is. And we'll move that around so you can see everything is now inside there. Now we can create a nice complex section and then we can create all different sections in our page. But what we can do and what makes this so powerful is once we've done that, we can now go and save that section as a template in its own right. So if we come up and we click on the edit option, Ooh, wrong one. Click on the edit option for the section. You can see in the top right hand corner, we've got our element settings. And in there, we've got one option, which is save as template. So we can click on there and we can give that a name. So we'll just call this 5.2 sample. And once we've named it, we need to click save changes on the right hand side. And then we'll just click save changes to save everything we've done. Okay, so once we've done that, let's just update the page to make sure that everything is saved the way we want it to be. Now what I'm gonna do is just delete everything in there. So we're gonna delete the entire container. And once we've done that, the page is blacked back to be a blank page. So what we're gonna do is come to the templates, click on there, and you can see now that we've got our 5.2 sample. If we click, we put that back in there and that's created our sort of container that has all the various different elements. So you can build up a nice library of these different sort of modules that are nicely laid out with a lot of detail in there. But there's other things you can do to this. We're not just restricted to creating sort of templates of different building blocks. We can still go in now and style the actual container itself. So let's just come in and just click on the little edit this row. And you can see we've got the section options. So you can see there's a whole range of different things we can do in there. We've got, again, the design options like we always have. But we've also got the ability to control this section independently. So we can now style that and do some other things. So before we do, let's just close this down. And let's go and take a look at the actual page itself. So the demo page at the moment is very simple. We've got the page title, our two column set up, our two column row, we've got some text in there, and we've got to separate a line underneath it. Okay, pretty boring. So we come back in, let's go back in and edit that. We can now go through and do a few things. We can section stretch this so if we want to, the same as we've got with rows, we can now go in and we can stretch the section and we can stretch the section and the content. So for this example, I'm gonna say stretch the section because I wanna keep the content contained inside my sort of column width. So we say that. All I'm gonna do now is come down and take a look at some of the other options. You can see we've got the content position and we can go through, we can specify where we want that to be, whether it's top, middle or bottom. 
we also have the option to create a video background if we want to. If we click yes on there, you can see that opens up now and gives us the option to go and choose the YouTube link. Let's uncheck that. What we do have the option for now, though, is we can create parallax effects that apply to this section. So if you are building up various different sort of placeholder sections for a site and you want to have that parallax effect in there, you can now save that as part of the section and save that as a template. So let's take a look at that in action. Let's go through and say we want to have simple with, well, we'll just go for simple for this example. And we'll choose an image that we want from our image library and we'll choose this one. And actually, let's go for something a bit bigger. That should be good. Set the image. You can see we can control the parallax speed if we want to animate the entire section, if we want to give it a section ID and so on. All those options are available to us. So we'll leave it as it is at the moment. What we will do is come back to the design options and let's give it a bit of space in around this. Let's just say for this, I want to put a padding of 150 pixels top and bottom just to make sure we can see plenty of the image and the text containers we have and the row and so on. Have a lot of breathing space in there. So let's hit save changes and let's just update that. Now remember, because we're doing this after we've applied the template, this is going to be only available on the page that we're currently working with. So in other words, you're only going to see that parallax effect on this page. You'd have to recreate this each time you insert this template. Obviously, if you didn't want to do that, you wanted to set these things up and then just maybe change the image, then you could do that before you save this out as a template. And then when you call it back up, all of those things that you set up, all those parameters are all going to be in place for you when you use this template section in any page. So let's just jump back over now and take a look. Let's refresh the page. And there's our image. And you can see if we scroll up and down, we now have a slight parallax effect. Now, you can't see it particularly brilliant on here because there's not a huge amount of information. So let me just jump back. I'll make a couple of alterations, pause the video, come back and show you a better example of exactly how this works. Okay, so jump back in now, made some changes to our basic layout. And as you can see, this is now a better example of how that parallax effect is working inside this section. So you can see I can scroll up and down and the parallax effect takes effect in the background. So these new sections, while you kind of look at them first of all and think, well, I don't really see what's so good about them. Once you start to realize that you can use those now, you can create more complex building blocks for your web page and your website so much quicker and easier. And then you can reuse those again and again and again throughout the entire site structure. It makes them really powerful. So something that's really simple sounding really has a lot of functionality and really useful when you create pages and sites that follow a, sort of a particular theme and style and layout. Anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. The two key things that I see have been added into version 5.2. I hope you found this useful. I hope it has shown you what you can do with these new features and how easy and powerful they are to really enhance the way you're working with Visual Composer. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. And if you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. Until next time, take care.